Back up the back up the yes, there we go. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into these games, guys. Spawning in the top left hand corner. On battle on the boardwalk. Again, I forgive me if I mispronounced any names. I mean, these are difficult. They're German, they're European, you know, they're definitely some interesting names to pronounce. But the green Terran piece is from Born Gosu. He goes from by the name of Ice Flosher. Hope it's pronounced right. Uh, apologies if I do not pronounce it right. Guys, just correct me in chat if I don't. And his opponent in the top right hand corner. This one's a little bit more easier to pronounce. From Taste of Bacon, he goes by the name of Peach. I may not say he's from Pig 2 or Pig Pan or you know anything right now, but that's just because we're on a different server in this game. Peach's gonna go ahead and expand down to that low ground, get the 17 hatch up and running, 17 hatch, 17 pool. Meanwhile, we will see Heist go for a bit of a wall off here. But both players, you know, being you know, pretty normal in their uh, openers. We do have the Overlord making the way over to the scout out his opponent, you know, two Overlords sending over. We got Steve the SUV also heading out across the map here. We'll battle on the boardwalk. Now battle on the boardwalk is a map that's a giant like claustrophobe type map. We you know there's some open areas and maneuver around, but you have to go all the way down to the south to find it. And you get some rocks down here in the south that kinda of wall off a back door entrance into like a gold base. And, you know, this is just one big map that's a one giant, you know, just mess up like in one big smash together map kind of like habitation station or you know just, just smash together and it's a map that personally as a terran i try to avoid even though it's pretty easy to drop people as a terran on this map a lot of places to be cheeky from you know it's definitely a map that could be played it's not a map that a lot of people prefer if you, you, know, if you catch my drift there we got SCV and a Reaper making the way back around the tip up here around the sun shares. If we're gonna jump onto that tower, get a little bit of vision before he jumps in here and sees what's going on. Now there is a jump up in the back here for the Reaper. But there is a way into this base. He's gonna go ahead and jump right up in here and start focusing down that spawning pool. Yeah, get that spawning pool. Everybody wants to kill a spawning pool as a Reaper, that'd be a dream come true, but certainly that's not gonna happen as these Reaper Wings are going to chase down this Reaper and will eventually end up killing it off. Very short-lived life. Now, one thing the Reaper didn't get to see here was the gold base. I mean, with no knowledge that uh, your opponent went for this gold, I mean, you could be behind economically, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Right now, we do have metabolic boosts on the way for Teach. We have a bit of a wall off over here. A high over here. Wall not has one SCV on the wrong side of the wall. Help him out, man. If we have a bit of a bio composition coming out here. Now, I say that the Hellions are on the way. It's pretty standard right now for Terran to pick up like four Hellions. Apply a little pressure, get a little bit of map control with them. Got an Overlord over here trying to make his way south. You know, hopefully to stay alive and see if this Marine actually catches him. But now, we can easily see a Marine swap or a Banshee swap up here. Yeah, here, looks like we are going to see... Yeah, these are for tanks. We're going to go for a Liberator instead, so it looks like it was scouted by Teach, so he's assuming Teach knows that there could be a Banshee on the way. But Teach, going to go ahead and get some Roaches. Some roaches, man, and going into a uh, mech composition with Roaches is going to be the best thing in the world, as we do have a second factory being added on, back on for heights. Where this game goes from here is still very much up in the air. We could see a timing in which Teach just you know, decides to flood a whole bunch of roaches out at one time. It gets super aggressive. Gets in here and just, you know, knocks down a natural base, knocks down the front wall, and you know, he can jump in here real quick, do some damage with these roaches, and put himself in a very good position, but outside that, I, he just doesn't have any answer for the Liberator that's out right now until he decides to make some Ravagers. Our right, Teach is going to go ahead for that third base. It looks like we do have a couple Hellions get ready to make their way down as well. Let's see what happens here. We got a Liberator moving out as well. So, highest looking to move out, put a little pressure on his opponent. As these units do make their way around across the map. We do have a total of five Hellions already down here. He is going to get forced to cancel on that hatchery. I, I don't know if he really needed to cancel that, mate. He could have left it there. 
you know, got the roaches down there and actually cleaned that up very, very easily and kept your third base, but that is going to put you behind as a Zerg. Being behind or on equal base to your opponent as a Zerg is not generally where you want to be. Now, seeing as Terran now has the opportunity to throw down a third base, you know, take a third for himself, he, you know, he can get ahead in an economic lead, but he is going on three factories now. He is sticking to his guns and playing mech. We do have 1-1 one, one on the way for Teach as well. There's plus one missile and plus one carapace. As well as Roach Speed. And the way this goes from here is still very much up in the air, but it's definitely starting to favor Terry. Like, the longer this game goes on, the more siege tanks that are going to come out. The more liberators are going to come out. And this is going to put Terry in a much, much stronger position overall. So far, no one taking that gold base just yet. Now, this command center could very easily be flown down there, and this one SCV is still hanging out outside. This must suck to be an SCV, you know. It must be a really terrible time because you know you finish a building, you always finish it facing south, and now you're stuck outside your wall. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, poor buddy. He needs to do more SCV things like mine minerals or build more buildings. Not idle SCV, no. Are you supply? Favorite heist. Worker Supply, also in favor of Heist Water, or Heist here, our green Terran player. Again, where this game goes from here, it's still very much up in the air, like... I mean, there's still options here for Peach to make a comeback. I mean, he does have his Hydrogen on the way, so he is looking to get into that Hydra composition. We Roach, Ling, Hydra. Twitch tell me how people going live everywhere else. Not worried about that right now. This one Ling going to be a hero and play knock knock on the supply depot, but he's going to juke down here and take this Zelda watchtower. Like, haha! Don't know I'm here. Behold the fall, a couple hellions going to come out. And, hey, look, a Ling. The way he runs, this poor hellion going to sacrifice his life trying to catch that one Ling. Well. Oh. Like a deer in the headlights, except you're the vehicle. You go, well, I don't think I should be here, Jimmy. You know, he just gets destroyed in like two seconds. Here we go, the Hellbats have been morphed. You should see the, t or the tanks on siege here very shortly for the move out. And put this Terran in a really good position. Now this map, when you go mech on a map like this, it has a lot of choke points. That are natural based choke points and they're not ones you can just open up through the rocks you know you destroy the rocks on catalyst le and bam you can open up the map a little bit but here as you see very narrow choke points which means you can bottleneck for either side very very easily which will put either player at like a huge disadvantage if you get caught in that at the wrong time we do have plus two missile attack on the way and muscular augments coming down for the hydras for teach but you know, I just don't think that's what he needs right now. He needs to get a, like a spire out, you know, get the corruptors coming. Yeah, so you have the uh, Broodlords out as well. I mean, he can honestly kind of fit some Gitas in, judging by the composition of heights here. I mean, it's only three Liberators. And more than likely, these Liberators are going to be used to siege up and push forward. So, well, he can easily pop some Gitas out here and just, you know, go to town. Another answer Teach has to himself right now is the infestation pit. I do not see an infestation pit for vipers or swarm hosts right now as well. So there's definitely some tech options here that he can go, you know, to buy himself some time to get back into this game and get caught up in his worker supply, get caught up in the army supply. I mean, he's roughly caught up, but he's still not quite where Zerg should be at this game. You know, not having many drones out, only 40 drones to the 64 Terran. I mean, it's just not. It's going to be a good day for Zerg here. This poor Overlord didn't ask for this man. He was just floating. Or Bobby. Here we go. The Liberator is going to siege up. And Zerg is going to push forward to try and get out of the Liberation Zone. One Liberator is going to get taken out. The second one will indeed live. But a lot of Zerg just painted Boardwalk Red, man. He just painted the Boardwalk. Needed a new paint job, clearly. Goes from purple to red in two seconds. Here we go, a lot of hydras were pumped out here. Plus two carapaces on the way. Now Teach 
All he has to do is just kind of hang back and make Terran come out to him. Don't fight into this. Now, the Hellbats have been morphed once again, and they are going to push forward. Just keep creeping forward. Basically, you're playing creep or die here as Terran, where he's going to keep pushing forward. You sell bats are like, hey, man, I want out of here. As they were like body blocked by their own siege tanks. Here we go. He's going to try and push his hellbats up there. I mean, he's just losing a lot. This is Liberator doing a great job zoning everything out, but the tanks on siege in a heartbeat. They're going to siege right back up, realizing he probably shouldn't have unsieged all of them at one time. But he is going to unsiege a few of them and push them forward. Then on the other side of this choke point, giving range his army a little bit more. And just like that, Zerg is just going to disappear. Now, these hellbats do have the freedom to just walk right up into this mineral line and start doing some economic damage to what ec economy that was there. Poor drones did just get fried there very quickly. But all in all, I do believe Terrence is looking to close this one out. I mean, the last of Zerg army just kind of ran in there and suicided itself. Tank's gonna siege right back up. Now that's a pretty low tank there. Can we get sniped out? A quick A click there. He's just paying attention, but I don't think he is. There it goes. And with that, I imagine Zerg is just gonna get rid of tap dots. The Thors are gonna show up here. He's gonna see the Thors, and that is indeed gonna be it for game number one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mute the audio just in case. We get void rays in our ear holes. We're going to see what happens afterwards. Yeah, I got void rays and, you know, like all up in my ears right now, man. I don't know how to counter this. Does it go away if I start another replay? Okay, I think it goes away if I start another replay. So we're gonna find out. Like someone pointed to a wrong file path. Alright, we're good. As long as I mute the audio before I leave game, we should be good to go. It's gonna be annoying for me, but not annoying for you guys now. Game number two. I mean this green Terran right here playing mech in game number one. He goes by the name of Heist Washam. Now I'm just gonna call him Heist because Heist just a lot easier to say than trying to figure out what the actual German pronunciation of the other, like the other half of his name there is. And his opponent in the top left hand corner, the yellow Zerg pieces of Teach. Taste of bacon. Supporting that lovely pig emblem that's sitting outside there. Now, I imagine Teach is just going to stick to his guns, open up a 17 hatch, 17 pool once again. There we go. Drone is on the way down here to take that natural base. We want height, so I imagine he's also going to stick to his guns and play a mech composition one more time. SCV is on his way out there to scout. We will have a bit of a Reaper expand come out once again. Into that Hellion play, into that mech afterwards. Yeah, just very standard Terran as to what's going on right now. But now Catalyst LE is a map... Due to the map pool this time around, I imagine it will stick around. It's a very, actually, well-balanced map. I haven't heard too many complaints about, like, you know, Protoss being favored on it, or Zerg or Terran being favored on it. But there's a lot of rocks around the map. Some of them close off ramps that lead to bases. Some of them open up the map a little bit. Like, there's a nice little choke on this ramp. If you open it up, you know, it's a nice wide ramp once again. Some natural fortifications, there is reaper jump ups around the map, so you can you know, sneak some reapers in the back behind your opponent's base very easily. SCV going to get up here and scout, see that his opponent has expanded, he's just going home now. There's not much else this SCV is going to get done. Oh, some things that have happened recently is a uh, strat where you go and throw down a bunker. As your opponent's third, if you're a Zerg, that way you can kind of deny their third and take your own third and get ahead in the base count. You know, if you're staying on equal or you know, at least one base behind a Zerg, you're in a pretty good position. But generally, you want to stay equal or at least one base ahead of a Zerg. So if you can, like, throw down the bunker and easily get in, the Reaper about to make his way up into the back of the base here. Great place for some proxy barracks. There were some. But there are no proxy barracks. 
Did he even get drone? Did he get drone? He got himself a drone. Now he's gonna get on out of here. Well played by that Reaper. As he will stay alive and he will be able to join up with the Hellions later. As we do see the factory switch coming down here. Starport also being started up. Now this is a very easy composition to say after the Banshees. But should your opponent decide to scout it, then I mean you can easily just change this right back into Liberator Viking. Kind of interested to see what the Raven will bring in, in the future. I hear that that is going to be a patch coming out here for the Raven to put back the auto turret. Going to be uh, something I don't think people are going to be too happy about. Fast Raven will return now. Things could be even worse. He's already fired down one of those new Hunter Seeker missiles, so like, like the armor reduction missile. And then uh, from there, you just throw down a bunch of missile turrets and just clean up an army really, really quick. You have to be on point with your macro now, ladies and gentlemen, or micro. This Reaper has a job. His job is to knock down this hatchery. The Lings are going to come back and make sure he doesn't do that. No! Poor Reaper. He didn't ask for this. He just wanted to pew pew your base a little bit, man. But now uh, we are going to have the Hellions jumping in play. Four of them are out now, going to make their way out across the map. Now, if you keep these aliens alive for later, you're going to have your Hellbat count started up very, very easily as well. So we do have an armory on the way, as well as a second factory. No siege tank production has started up just yet. Aliens looking to, you know, find a way into the main base or into the natural base to find some economic damage. But with the roaches out so far, I don't see that happening. But Teach is actually going to go ahead and move out. I don't Teach. Unless you're going to like morph Ravagers here, man, and try and push the front, I don't think you're going to have enough here to do anything. Liberator even going to come in here and try and find a place to siege up. The Queen's going to get pulled out of position. These Hellions going to make their way right up into the main base. Going to make their way right to the drone line and see if they get anything done here. Here we go, the drone barbecue begins, and they're all focusing down the queen. Did they get anything yet? No kills, no kills. Finally focusing down the drones there, realizing he needs to micro that a little bit. I think I should get the queen here. You're basically, if we get the queen. Nine, is it going to be enough? No, the roaches do come back to clean that up. Teach, you know, you shake, shake it up a little bit there. He loses eight drones so far. There is a Liberator hanging out here as well. Liberator Operator. And the siege right back up and, you know, we're going to zone out these gases. The Big Lava Queen still here. He says, yeah, no, you're not allowed. Go away. Then we're going to come over here and siege up. You know, not cover the mineral blinds at all. Teach, on the other hand, is looking to be aggressive. I mean, there is no tanks out. First tank just now popped out here for Heist. So he will have some army back to defend. He does only have two Hellions as well. Uh, if you put some Ravagers in his mix, Teach, you can very easily just push in here. And then proceed to do the damage. Now, Liberator is now going to siege up. Now, if, again, if you had Ravagers here... And he's was more Ravagers, you know, took out the tank with Curse of Bile. You'd be in a much better position, but overall, I mean, now you're in a situation where you have three tanks and you can defend very easily as Terran, and there's no answer for the tanks. Without busting the front with just roaches, you know, you're going to lose a lot of roaches should you do that. And with no Curse of Bile in the mix, you're just going to have to back off and go on home as their you know, drone back up. Watch yourself a little bit of time. You saw your opponent is still on two base. But... Terran gonna throw down the scan, make sure there's no army out there. I mean, you can use the Liberator, just flew it out there. I'm mean, like, oh yeah, there's no army, but hey. Kind of a waste of a scan there. Be used for a mule. Liberator operator still hanging out, has two drone kills. Let's see what the Liberator operator gets now. Uh, more duct tape and possibly doom. Yeah, no duct tape's gonna fix that one, man. Did you know they use like duct tape and speed tape on airplanes? 
like on the flaps and the landing gear sometimes. Scary thought, huh? Anyway, guys, we do have third base coming down here for Terran now. Yeah, it's like working on a car, and I called my dad up about that. If you, funny story, I called him up and said, "Hey, I got a problem here. What should I use for this?" And he's like, "Just use some speed tape." I'm like, "What? Yeah, we use it on airplanes all the time." I'm like, "Oh well, now I feel more comfortable flying on your airline." Errands, man. We just we just tape it up. SUV, you know that'd be an interesting skin for an SUV to uh have like a tape dispenser on its hands when it's repairing, you know. Overlord going to get taken out there by that liberator. So all in all, we're back to a very quiet macro game in all regards. But now this is where Teach needs to be teching up. This time he is going for his infestation pit. His hydralis den is almost done, but so he does have options here. To, you know, go ahead and just knock down, just tear in a peg a bit. We'll have to see exactly what he has in store for us. More factories and Thor's now being added on. Terran looks like he's going to move out. Really great position for Terran to move out here. You know, you're up to seven army supply to teach. Worker count is, you know, caught back up for all like all intended purposes. There is a fourth base on the way for teach now. So, I mean, there's a chance he can get in here and find some damage. Sure. Teach actually going to move south at the same time this army moves out. Now, this could both be disastrous and it could also force Terran to come back home. But with upgrade advantage favor a Terran right now with that plus one of ground weaponry, I don't see him really turning around much. I mean, he's got this much army supply committed to moving across the map. Teach, you need to be active, man. You can't sit here with your idle army. You need to get in here and start doing some damage. You need to pull this Terran back, but... No, no don't bring your... Don't left to your army! Don't left to your army! Push into your Terran opponent's base, you know, force a bit of a base trade, force them to come back. We I mean, won't win the base trade with this much army. But at the same time, you will find some damage while you max it out on your side of the map. I mean, there's no reason to try and come back and fight this army with a few Hydras and some Roaches. A Swarm Host is even going to make its way into this composition now. I do like the idea for the Swarm Host. A few more would be nice. He is going to get down here and find this unprotected base. He is just going to get cancelled, so. He gets a win there. He does kind of pull the Terran army back as well, but I would like them to see him push into the third, you know, and find some damage there. That would have been more disastrous to force a lift on that orbital command, as well as get some SCV kills, and then get on out of there. Been a much better position. Now this one swarm host could be the hero. It did have their movement speed reduce off creep. Now, there is a style Terran's been playing lately where you just go, like, Liberator, Turret, Ghost. And you just turtle out the map. And from there, you just start out your opponent while you just slowly re-expand across the map. Now, I don't see either of these players going for that kind of composition because it's a really difficult composition to actually end up playing. But it really forces uh, Zerg to not be able to push into anything. It forces your opponent to really have to start to bounce around a bit more and, you know, find some damage where they can. Now, here we go. The clash is going to happen here between these two armies. Army supply, not in favor of Teach. He's down 15. And with the tanks here, that army supply is just going to disappear. First tank rounds go out, knocking him down about 10 more supply there. Third base here is going to end up falling for Zerg. And once again, the swarm host, not throwing out any Loki, is just going to disappear. So a bit of a miscue on that swarm host. It's going to get on top of this Zerg or a Terran army, but for what intended purpose? I mean, it's mech. Mech is not a composition you're just going to easily walk up on top of and, you know, take apart. Not without your Broodlords, not without any kind of Vipers or Blinding Clouds. I mean, there's options there, and each has it. Base is going to GG out, and that's going to be it. We're going to go ahead and move into group B now. Let me mute this audio before the void rays start back up. Not muting the mic, just muting the desktop there.